let's talk immune therapy. I mean, I've been, you know, my research career has been around vaccines for colon cancer and other GI yeah. cancers and been slogging along trying to get people to believe that immune therapy might one day work. And when it does, of course, they've left GI cancer behind. And, and we've seen some activity uh, in some GI cancers. Maybe you guys want to talk a little bit about uh, the abstract and again in the oral session uh, we'll hear about tomorrow. Um, in the subset of colon cancer patients, uh, the MSI mismatch repair patients. You want to yeah, well, that's the group we learn, which is maybe a good candidate for immunotherapy because we learn MSI have a higher production of neoantigens given the larger heterogeneity of this tumor, and this makes it more sensitive for uh, an immunotherapeutic approach. And uh, yeah, we have seen some signals here in a trial presented with uh, pembrolizumab in this setting highly interesting, but still a limited number of patients. Yeah. But, but, you know, 15, 20 percent of colon cancer is not a small wedge. It's a bigger wedge than you could, some of the lung cancer data and, yeah. uh, and others. Yeah. I mean, to me, I saw this and I thought, this just takes a larger repeat phase two study, and I think this drug gets approved yeah. for colon cancer, at least yeah. in the States. What do you think? Yeah. I think that really we are in a, in a new frontier of immunotherapy because, you know, when I was a student, when I started my career, immunotherapy was seen as a, a chimera, you know, something Crazy. that... Crazy. Sound like uh, <laughs> something that eventually will work because, you know, immune surveillance is what controls our cells to not, not become cancer, and there is cancer uh, immune deficiency, uh, whatever. And now when this uh, PD-1, uh, PD-L1 concept, uh, these immune checkpoints inhibitors concept came up, now we are seeing in all tumors an explosion of potential uh, studies. The risk is that, as is happening now in lung cancer, the studies will be repetitive in unselected patients, chemo, ABC or AB plus or minus the immunotherapy of your choice. And the fact that at least in colorectal cancer we have a signal in mismatch repair deficiency over neoantigen load uh, increase, at least is directing us to a subgroup of patients. Yeah. Maybe there are some other patients that could benefit, but at least we can learn in these patients how to use these drugs yeah. and when to use these drugs. Well, I want to throw in that, you know, for, for years we've known, there's been data that says if in our primary colon cancers, that if we measure the immune infiltrate, mm -hmm. it is one of the strongest mm -hmm. prognostic mm -hmm. uh, predictors, and yet we've been, again, ignoring that. And finally, uh, there are papers that have supported this. A company is developing an assay mm -hmm. so we can measure it. And, and I think we're going to start to distinguish our patients, not just with the mismatch okay. repair, but by measuring this yeah. immune and So maybe you will increase the number of these yeah. patients. And we may be able to change it over time. I mean, one of the things we're working on in our shop and others is, can we in some way either stimulate the immune system mm -hmm. through vaccines, we know we can, and combine with checkpoints, or, or disrupt the with, tumor in with, some with way. We have, a, we have a, from our group, a phase three trial with a TLR9 agonist mm -hmm. as maintenance setting running. Perfect. And this is phase three trial, which more than 500 patients should be included. Mm -hmm. So different fields of immunotherapy, right. vaccines, checkpoint inhibitors, these unspecific right. stimulants, Highly interesting field. So we're, we're, there's hope that we, we right. might one day cure cancer. So we're going to...